Gogo is an extremely underused Pokemon, but it's actually weirdly kind of good. It has solid bulk with its base 123 HP, and solid offensive presence with its base 100 attack. Its main ability, Sap Sipper, boosts your attack by one stage if you're hit by a grass move, and it even has the option for the ability Grass Pelt, which boosts defense by 50% if grassy terrain is active. It was also buffed in Gen 9 with the addition of Stab Trailblaze, which is a 50 base power move that boosts speed one stage. With the ability to set up with Bulk Up and nice damage and healing from Horn Leech, coverage with Earthquake and Rock Slide, Go Goat's a super fun Pokemon that nobody knows about. Ladies and gentlemen, what is happening? Welcome back to another Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle. Today, I have a super fun match with like the goofiest team of all time. If you're into that kind of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button. It really helps out the channel. It only takes you a second. I promise you won't regret it. And before we get into the battle, I want to give a huge shout out to today's sponsor and one of my favorite things ever, Surfshark VPN. If you're somehow still unfamiliar with what the benefits are of a VPN, let me break it down for you. With Surfshark, you're able to mask what you do online to keep you safe, but also virtually travel the world in one click. For example, if you live in the United States and are sick of the same old stuff on streaming sites like Netflix, you can instantly move your IP over to Canada and access the biggest movie catalog on Netflix. For real, I don't know why, but Canada always has the best Netflix stuff. One of my other favorite uses is bypassing price discrimination. I actually can't get enough of this one. When you're surfing the web looking for flights, for example, these websites take note of your IP and know everything you're seeing and they'll literally charge you more for the same flight. But if you pop on the old Surfshark, all of a sudden they can't track you, and the pricing will be at what it should be. They also have a feature called Surfshark Alert that monitors your personal data and checks for potential breaches that give you real-time alerts to protect your identity. Which, in today's day and age, you can never be too safe. Another one of the greatest parts about Surfshark is that you can literally use unlimited devices on one single subscription. So if you're not convinced already, Surfshark has given my viewers a special holiday deal where if you use code Hayden at checkout, you can get yourself an additional six months for free. So when you're ready, go ahead and hit that link in my description and check it out. Now let's go ahead and get back into the battle. So my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with the Alolan Ninetales. Listen, I used to like this thing. It's a great design, overall quality Pokemon. However, playing against it has made me despise it because Aurora Veil vale is broken and just... It's no fun for anybody. It, it really ruins the momentum of a match having both a light screen and a reflect at the same time. I decided to lead off with the Flesh Hands, and I decided to just go for a fake out as they're just going to switch that thing out of here and bring in the T. So... This little green fella, of course, doesn't take these hands. He just goes right through them, and I figure this thing probably wants to set up. Most of the time you see this, it's going to be kind of a defensive set with Calm Mind. It'll have its signature move, Macha Gacha, which, of course, does damage, heals them, and potentially burns you. It's a, it's a broken cup of tea, I tell you what. But uh, it does go for the Calm Mind here as I decide to hit it with a knockoff. So we're actually able to do really nice damage and get rid of this thing's leftovers. So having a decent amount of chip on that is actually really nice. Now... I don't really have much business staying in here. Plus, I know this thing wants to try to get health back with the Matcha Gacha. So, I'm gonna go ahead and switch directly into the Inspector Go Goat gadget. I am Sap Sipper, and I come in, and I do in fact go for that Matcha Gacha, and we just absolutely sip the shit out of that tea. And I don't know what they'd be putting in that tea, but it does give me a nice little attack boost. And at this point, I'm just gonna go for the bulk up. I don't necessarily have a lot to touch the Sinistra, but at plus one attack, plus a bulk up, I could start to start to get the boy rolling here. Now they're going to end up switching out here and they actually bring in the Great Tusk. So, we're a couple of horn fellas, you know, just chilling. Got the horns out for the boys. I do go for that bulk up on the switch. And at the plus one defense, I know I can take an Ice Spinner or whatever this thing wants to go for. Um, and I can actually hit it pretty hard with a Horn Leech. So, that's the plan. I'm able to get some recovery, but they decide to actually instead go for the Stealth Rock. Uh, so, they want to prioritize getting the Hazard up. I'm totally fine with that because that essentially means I can do well over half with a Horn Leech. And Great Tusk is just always a monster, and it's, it's good to try to take care of this thing. So, I obviously do take a little bit of Rocky Helmet damage. Not the biggest deal. I would honestly prefer them have gone for an attack, just because I can kind of negate that damage with the healing that I do get for that Horn Leech. And at this point, they're actually just going to switch out the Great Tusk. Realize, you mess with the goat, you get the horns. And they're going to instead switch into the Galarian Slow King. So, this is another fella who's about to find out the hard way that, in fact, you probably should not play with the goat. Uh, we do go for that Horn Leech, does actually a decent chunk of damage here and brings us back to full. So we're still feeling good here, we got plus two attack, got that plus one defense, and I also have the coverage in the form of Earthquake uh, for the poison type here. So I go for that Earthquake, Slow King definitely does not want to deal with that, and they probably just did not see that coming. Literally nobody uses Go Goat, so we get the element of surprise on our hands, and now they get a free switch into whatever they like. So in comes Bax Calibur. Now most of the time you see these, they are going to be a setup variant. I in order to keep it as safe as possible, I'm going to go for the Terra Water. I'm thinking they probably just go for some type of ice move here. 
Uh, realizing that the Go Goat is actually starting to get rolling here. I can go for the defensive Terra, take nothing from like an Ice School Crash or whatever this thing wants to do, and then fire off a nice little Rock Slide in return. Now, this thing actually decides to go for the Dragon Dance. They're feeling, they're feeling like testing the Goat still, which I feel like I, I've displayed the dominance here. I go for this Rock Slide, and it is actually not quite going to be able to take it out. I believe there was close to being a roll, and now we find ourselves in a spot where this thing can go for a Scale Shot. So, with the loaded dice, it's going to be able to hit five times. However, looking at this damage, we take five easily, no problem, and then knock it out. But, the fifth one literally gets a critical hit to give it just enough damage to knock out Go-Goat. And the, the Goat disrespect on that last scale shot, we made it all the way to the fifth one. Not only was it not guaranteed that they even hit five times, but them getting the crit on the fifth one is honestly just rude. So... Now this thing gets a nice little speed boost, plus the dragon dance, and all of a sudden the tables have turned, the goat is down, and I have to figure out a, a little revenge switch. So, I decide to go into the iron hands. I'm thinking I can definitely just go for the fake out with that priority, and the minus one defense, it should knock it out. Now, to my surprise, they actually end up going for the Terra of their own here, and they're gonna go for the steel Terra. Knowing that the fake out is coming, they likely just want to try to be able to take it and then finish off the Iron Hands is the only thing with priority, but the Fake Out literally just takes care of it, and I feel a little bit better about my day at this point. We've both you know, effectively kind of wasted our Terras, and uh, happy to see that thing down, because had I not taken that out with the Fake Out, it outspeeds everything on my team and then just sweeps the rest of the game. So the game goes on, Go Go got cut a little bit short, but we're able to put enough of a hole in the team to where we're feeling like we're in a decent position. So they bring in the Alolan Ninetales. Of course, this thing is going to go for that Aurora Veil. I decide to just go for the knockoff. Even a Drain Punch behind uh, the screens is not going to do much anyway. So I go for the knockoff. What that's going to do is just get rid of the Light Clay. And essentially, if they do manage to get up another Aurora Veil, it'll stay up for five turns rather than eight. So I figured it was worth it just to go for that as now they go for the Moon Blast. So this is an Assault Vest Hariyama. I'm literally thick as hell built to take special attacks all day long. Uh, so I take it relatively nicely, fire off a Drain Punch, and literally just scratch it, does nothing. But uh, this is why we, <laughs> we hate Aurora Veil. So they're able to go for one more Moon Blast, actually does end up taking me out. And down goes the thickest thighs and hands in the game. So now at least I get a Revenge Switch. And honestly, I have a couple different options. I decide to go into uh, the Golduck here. I'm thinking if I can get the Simple Beam off on this thing, I actually have a great shot to get the Gardevoir to switch in, trace the Simple ability, and start to set up. So, they end up going for the Moon Blast. Super important to note they're not carrying the Freeze Dry. So I'm able to take that and then throw Circles at my dude, which is going to get rid of Snow Warning, and instead give this thing Simple. So, they're probably sitting there confused. Thinking, like, okay, I have Simple now? I don't know. They're just going to finish me off with the Moon Blast, and down goes the Gold Duck. But... I did exactly what I needed to do, and I feel confident that now we can we can execute the Gardevoir plan. So the snow goes away, the Aurora Veil is going to stick up for a little while, but Gardevoir has some work to do before we can get a little bit of a sweep going. So I bring in Flubber, and at this point, of course, we are going to trace the ability that I gave to it, and now we have Simple. So what that's going to do is it doubles the effects of stat increases or decreases. So now... When I go for a Calm Mind, I'm able to get plus two instead of plus one. They actually end up going for the Blizzard and miss, so you'll love to see that. And I get up a nice little Calm Mind. So, we're feeling simple out here today, boys. And we got a nice little sharp boost on both Special Attack and Special Defense. So now I can take Blizzards and Moon Blasts all day long. They end up going for another Blizzard, and it actually misses. So two Blizzard misses in a row. Without your snow, you're nothing. And that is amazing because we just straight up go for another Calm Mind. I have no reason not to just spam the calm mines at this point we're also holding the salic berry to where if we do get knocked down into berry range it's going to double our speed um they just decide to stay in there's there's no switching out at this point goes for a blizzard and yeah at the plus four special defense there it does laughable damage so i just i'm feeling a little bit spicy so i actually go for a third calm mind essentially just to stall out the aurora veil turns and at this point finally we can make it happen i can go for a draining kiss i'm at plus six special attack and plus six special defense the reason why i click draining kiss is because I want to prioritize keeping my health up. And they actually end up switching into the Palafin. This thing just comes in right to a nice little smoocheroo, and that is easily going to take care of it. I imagine they probably go into Palafin there, not keeping track of the boost that I have for my Calm Mines. As I sat there and went for three in a row, they probably just thought I was going to do it again. But we surprise them with the old smooch, and down goes one of the biggest threats. So, 
We are out here in full form, and at this point they go into the Sinistra. Unfortunately for them, however, stored power is at like literally 2 billion power at this point. You actually get plus 20 power for every stat boost, and I have plus 6 in special attack and special defense. So, yeah, there's not a Pokemon on this side of the Mississippi that's taking a stored power uh, from this Gardevoir at this point. In comes Great Tusk, we give him the old Razzle Dazzle, and another final Pokemon is going to be that Alola Ninetales. So, we're able to take advantage of Ninetales for once. And the simple plan has he fallen directly into my simple trap once again. Um, I can just finish this thing off after taking a Moonblast, obviously with plus six special defense. It doesn't hurt us, but what does hurt is this stored power. So that takes care of the Ninetales and effectively is going to finish off the game. And uh, couldn't have done it. Couldn't have done it without the without the squad. This is a super fun team. That when you can get it to <laughs> work out, it really it really pays off. So thank you guys very much for watching. I really do appreciate all the support. Make sure to leave a comment and let me know if you enjoy these types of kind of teams that I've been messing around with. And I will see you next time. Peace out.